Hello, my name is Kevin Dorn. I'm a graduate student at the University of Minnesota in the Department of Plant Biology. I work with Drs. David Marks and Don Weiss. As part of the Forever Green Initiative, our group is working towards innovative agriculture that builds our local economy and protects our environment. We're doing this by developing genetic and genomic tools for a new crop species that can be used to strengthen current agricultural practices. Specifically, we're working on improving pennycress, a new plant species that can be integrated into the current corn and soybean rotation. As part of the Forever Green Initiative, we are looking to add innovative agricultural practices to maintain a continuous living cover on the landscape. Currently in Minnesota and much of the Midwest, our main row crops like corn and soybean are planted in the spring and harvested in the fall. From the time after harvesting in the fall until planting again in the spring, the barren ground has been shown to lead to spring weed growth, topsoil loss, erosion, nutrient leaching, and water pollution. The use of winter cover crops has been shown to be an effective practice for managing these problems. Our group is interested in improving pennycress for this purpose. The integration of pennycress into the current system is relatively straightforward. If farmers plant pennycress in the fall after harvesting their main crop, the pennycress will germinate and provide a living cover over the winter. In the spring, the pennycress will outcompete spring weed growth, helping limit the need for herbicides. Also, pennycress produces a substantial amount of seeds. In our test plots, pennycress grown this way can yield up to 1,500 pounds of seed per acre. Pennycress seed is high in oils that can be converted to biodiesel and has the potential to produce up to 100 gallons of biodiesel per acre. Even though pennycress has been shown to be an effective cover crop, we're interested in making targeted improvements to important agronomic traits. For example, pennycress has been shown to have relatively high levels of seed dormancy, which means that not all of the pennycress seed of farmer plants will germinate quickly. Other traits we're also interested in improving are increasing the rate of flowering in the spring so that we can harvest the pennycress seed as early as possible to allow for fast planting of the traditional main crops. We would also like to improve seed characteristics like seed size, increase the amount of seed a single plant produces, and further improving the oil quality and quantity in the seed. To work towards developing lines of pennycress with these beneficial traits, our research group has begun sequencing the genome of pennycress. In the past 10 years, there has been a 100,000-fold decrease in the cost of DNA sequencing, making it realistic for research scientists to sequence the genomes of many different plant species. By sequencing the genome of pennycress, we will provide valuable resources for genomic-assisted breeding efforts starting here at the University of Minnesota, which will develop lines of pennycress with all of these beneficial traits. For example, with the pennycress genome sequence, we will be able to select lines with beneficial genes and use them as parents in the breeding program. This strategy will allow for rapid trade improvements compared to traditional methods. Thank you for letting me share our research with you. Here at the University of Minnesota, we are excited to be part of innovating agricultural practices to advance our economy and protect our environment. To find out more about my research, please feel free to email me at dorn at umn.edu. To find out more about the Forever Green Initiative, please visit our website, www.synram.umn.edu slash forevergreen. Thanks for watching. Thank you.